Hello again, um, my name is Still Lee and this is my vlog about being transgender. Now, I, last time I told you a little bit about the kind of the words I use to identify myself and what they mean and I said that this time I would tell you exactly what it means, or at least as close as I can, what it means to me to be transgender. Um, now, it's only understanding that this is my story, not everybody else's story. Everybody has a different one to tell. But I never fit. Not anywhere. I didn't fit at school. I didn't fit at home. Um, I didn't fit not just in my own body, I never fit in my own head. I was told I was a girl, but then I was told that I was none of the things that a girl was supposed to be. So there was confusion. <laughs> There was a lot of years, a lot of time spent trying to figure out how to be this person that I was somehow supposed to be. You know, I went, I went through it all. You know, I'm friends doing makeovers to make me look pretty, um, growing my hair long, um, trying to make myself look pretty, trying to act more like a girl, look more like a girl, talk more like a girl, walk more like a girl, trying to get interested in things that girls were supposed to be interested in, all these things that I was told that I was supposed to be and supposed to care about and supposed to look like and act like and all these things that the world told me I just wasn't doing. I accepted early on that I was attracted to women. Um, that was fine because, you know, there's a definition of that, it's a dictionary thing, you know, it's just like, I am told I'm female, and I like women, therefore I'm a lesbian. The term never felt right, but it was logic, there was logic to it, I understood where I got the, where the term came from, what it meant, and I applied it to myself because that's what I thought that I was supposed to be. I never fit there either, I didn't fit in the queer community either, because I wasn't a lesbian. I tried to be who I was without actually being who I was and that was hard because it meant it meant that I never felt right it meant that I knew that I was never the person I was meant to be but I couldn't figure out why or how or or every time I came close to it something or someone or something would happen and I'd pull back away again and it took a long time it took 30 years for me to stop doing that. It took 30 years of depression and self-harm and self-hatred and self-loathing and avoiding mirrors and trying to hide myself from even myself, never mind everybody else. And that was hell for 30 years. You know, and it wasn't just hell in myself, it was hell from other people, it was bullying, and it was stereotypes, and it was assumptions people made about me, and... But I finally saw it. I finally saw that I wasn't the girl that I'd been trying to be all this time. And I started to see who I actually was. And there wasn't one moment where I was just like, oh, holy crap, I'm this. There wasn't that. Uh, some people get that, uh, but not me. There was, I don't even remember the day, I don't remember the time, I can't remember it, just it came on gradually. I reached a place in myself where I was able to do the thing and bit by bit, my brain, I guess, kind of fed it to me and at some point I just kind of was that. I realised that's that was knowledge that I had about who I was. And that was terrifying and weird and terrifying again and <laughs> but good because it meant that I wasn't actually broken because that's what I thought I was. All my life I thought I was just broken. I thought I was just wrong. That something about me had just been made wrong or something, you know, or, or I was supposed to be made right but I'd somehow managed to make myself wrong or, you know, I, I blamed myself for never being able to fit. I thought it was my fault. I thought if I just, you know, if I did this or I did that or I pretended to be that or I went there or... And it wasn't that. I wasn't broken. I hadn't broken myself. I hadn't been made with bits missing that were supposed to be there. 
I was just not the person that the world told me I was supposed to be. I wasn't that girl, and I couldn't possibly have been because that's not how I was made. It's not easy to be trans. It's not. Telling other people, you know, you're kind of putting yourself in for the potential of a world of hurt by telling somebody else, by telling loved ones, by telling family, by telling friends, you know, they're not necessarily going to accept, and that's happened. And, you know, from them, you know, family and friends saying, no, we don't want that, to total strangers on the internet telling me to kill myself or policing my gender, you know, it's, it's not easy dealing with doctors because I want to go, you know, st I wanted to start transitioning, going through red tape and bureaucracy and everything just to try and get something in place so I could start taking hormones and, and just 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 learning this new person in the midst of all of that is hard and I know that there's more hard to have because the world much as it hated the fact that I wasn't the girl I was supposed to be would have preferred me to continue being that fake thing than to be this more authentic thing because it doesn't fit in the the black and white gender binary that is easiest for other people to try and shove you in but I would rather be me any day I'd rather lose family lose friends have strangers say horrible things I'd, uh, uh, have people abuse me physically emotionally mentally I'd rather go through all of that crap that I have to go through over and over again I will go through that rather than pretend that I'm not who I am now I found that person, now I'm starting to get to know who that person is on the inside and on the outside there is nothing, nothing in the world that would make me go back because no matter what, no matter how bad it gets this, this is still better I'm better it's better and there's nothing else I can really say it's better. I'm better. Thank you.